All right, so we continue with examples uh, demonstrating how arithmetic operators behave uh, in a C++ program, okay? So I am uh, now creating this file called example8.cpp. We will further look at different ways to do addition with integers, and then I'll migrate to float numbers, and then we'll look at and explore other uh, 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 arithmetic operators like the minus and the subtra uh, for subtraction, uh, the uh, forward slash for division, uh, and uh, the uh, asterisk for multiplication. Okay, so I am going to call this file example 8, and the extension is a .cpp file, so let's save it right here. Okay. At this stage, if you want, you can actually compile this just, just to see how it works. Compile and run. Okay. And notice I made a mistake because I forgot to put the parentheses for the function. So do not forget that if you are trying to define a function like main, which is the controlling function. So this is a good review. And this was a nice little mistake here that shows you you need these. Anytime you're dealing with functions, just like system is a function as well. Uh, notice it has parentheses, except it takes a parameter, which is a command for the prompt to pause the screen. Now let's go ahead and compile and run and see how the uh, screen is paused for us by pressing key to continue, right? It's using the console on your uh, Windows machine, in my, in my case, right, to do this. Uh, so let me just make the output a little bigger, pick a different family of fonts. I think this worked out nicely for us last time. Here you go. All right. Okay, good. Excellent. So now uh, let's continue on with the same example we started last time. So we have int num1, num2, and some result. Okay. And we've seen that we could do what we call a compile time operation and assignment, right? And a runtime assignment for num1, num2. That means when the program is running, it will ask the user to enter some values and then it will add them up. Uh, we're going to do something similar, except this time I'm going to do the addition, not in a separate line, but I'm going to combine it with the output to the screen within the stream of C out. So let's suppose I ask for the user to enter a value for num1. Uh, and to be precise, an integer value. I'm going to put a semicolon here, cn num1, All right? So this will allow a runtime assignment value to num1, okay? We're going to do the same thing for num2. Enter an integer value for num2. And again, that's a string literal. So you could put a semicolon there. So you want the prompt to be there when cn is executed. So this would be num2, semicolon. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use this variable result. I'm going to simply do the addition and display it right here. So I can do something like this, see out. And I could say something like this, num1 plus num2 equals. Now this will simply, right, show the string num1 plus num2. It will not show the values. If you want to show the values, you can do that. Uh, and uh, just like the previous video, that's what we did. But right now I'm just doing this. But notice what I'm going to do. Num1 plus num2. Now, what this would do, it will actually do the operation right here. So the add operation in my case here got executed while we're streaming to the console. Right. So the actual operator operation happened right here, right? So we don't need the variable result or the intermediate variable result uh, for something or a scenario of this nature. 
let's see how this works. Uh, compile and run. Okay, so it's asked me for num1, so I'm just going to move it here so you can follow along as it's interacting with the user, uh, which line we're executing. Right now it's at cn num1. This is why the prompt is blinking right next to the first print statement. Okay, there's no slash n or n del, so you're on the same line. And I'm going to enter a 6. Then it's going to ask me for num2, same scenario. And I'm going to enter 2. Right, so now notice what happens, num1 plus num2 equals 8, okay? Now, if you want to display num1 and num2 in the print statement, well, let's modify that. Uh, so to do that, take the, uh, the, uh, the two quotes out, put the streamline here, put a quote back in here, put a quote back in here, and do this as well and something like this so now these here are not operators anymore they're simply a string okay and what they would do is they will display to the screen as a plus and an equal right except what you're going to get here is the actual value stored in num1 and the actual value stored in num2. So this would have a much better natural appeal as far as the output is concerned, but it involves a little more, a little more work. So let's go ahead and compile this and run. And let's go ahead and enter num1, 3. And let's go ahead and enter 2. And there you have it. 3 plus 2 equals 5. Okay, so for the next video, what we will do is we will handle the minus, the multiply, and the division, and we're going to mix it up a little bit in terms of data types, and what we'll use are floats and integers. Then we can combine them too to see the do's and don'ts of combining floats and integer values. Okay, all right, so I'll see you for the next video. Thank you.